What's up everyone? Kenneth West with Table Soccer here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to 2021. It started exactly the same way that 2020 ended. It's raining outside, we're in tier four, but hopefully we're about to give you guys something to be happy about, something to look forward to, and something to get your teeth into to kickstart 2021 in the right way. This is the Westwood Table Soccer Painting Academy. If you've got no idea what it is, there's going to be a video that's going to go up here. It's going to explain exactly what it is. I'm going to give you a brief description now. We are going to be doing a Paint With Me style series. This is the first we're going to be doing and it is unbelievably sponsored by Santiago Table Soccer. Their links are in the description below because the great thing about being sponsored by Mark from Santiago Table Soccer is that you guys are going to get a discount on your bases and your discs for this series if you get over there quick. Mine have arrived here today and I'm going to show you what I've chosen and we're going to talk a little bit about what we've got and a little bit of prep, how to do the box, explain a few things. Let's get on with it. Cut, 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 cow, cut. Wait just two seconds. I'm getting involved here. I'm cutting myself off here because what I want to do before we get any further into this video is give a shout out to everyone who has ordered the bases and the discs and the team sets through Mark. Some of you have even ordered more than one set, which is absolutely amazing. So thank you so much to every single one of you that has got involved. So I'm going to go through your names now and give you guys a shout out. So thank you very much, Ken D, Brian G, Brett P, Ian P, Malcolm U, Trevor C, David E, Marco T, Andrew C, Paul H, Craig T, Tom W, Stefan U, Julian E, Andrew M, all the way from Japan, what a legend. Chris B, Graham H, Richard F, Stephen G, Stephen H, Martin E, Roy D, Gilbert T, Nick H, Russell C, John T, Sputio Collector, thanks mate. Um, Neil C, John M, and literally just had another email here for a Peter D, so guys, if I've called your name out, I've shouted you out. Thank you so much for ordering. That is as of today, which is seven minutes past one on the 29th of December. There is still time from the moment this video goes out for you to get on this. Two days to be precise. This video is coming out on the 1st of January, 2021. You will have two days to get yourself ordered on the discount in the description down below to get these parts at a discount price. When your names come in, I will give you guys a shout out in the next video. Before we quickly get back to the video, if you have any questions or I go over anything in this video you're not 100% sure about or you want any more clarification, please get yourselves in the comments, put the question down there, I will answer it down there, and then I will try and cover it in sort of a pre-intro to video number two. So I've not only told you, but I've showed you as well. You can get in touch with us on any of the other methods as well. You can email us westwood.ts at gmail.com or you can use our Twitter, westwood underscore TS. I think that's it. Me again, quick one. Just got a comment through on my phone. The goalkeeper, the goalkeeper for this team is in dark green. So the shirt color and the paint code we're gonna be using for the goalkeeper is humble matte. 80. That is the paint code we're going to be using for the keeper. If you don't want to buy a completely new paint for the keeper, just do in black because that is probably the other option that I will recommend. So if you want to do the exact keeper that is in this team, then it's going to need to be the Humbrol Matte 80 Dark Green. If you don't want to buy another colour just for the sake of doing the keeper, just do him in a black shirt and I will show you guys both options. That is actually it this time. Let's run the video. So here is the contents of the package that I got from Santiago Table Soccer. Now you guys will only have one of these and there's a couple of extra bases and discs in here. And I've also got two boxes. I've got one here which I've already built here. This is the plain green Santiago box. So if you guys made this choice on your selection, this is the box that you will get. Lovely green colour, pre-printed. Lovely little space here as well to put a team end label on which I will show you how I do those as well. And inside the box, plain white, standard set out for a Sputio heavyweight team. Now what I'm gonna do as a little bonus for you guys is I'm gonna show you how we 
build them. So let's get this one out of the way. When you get your boxes, okay, if you've gone for a plain white, which is what this is, you will have these three pieces here. Now, one of these pieces is the bottom of the box and one of these pieces is the lid. Now, the easiest way to work out which is which is to put them up and line them up like this. Now, you can see along this top edge here, it's fairly obvious there's a size difference. The smaller one, which is currently the one that's in my hand, is the base of the box. So let's get on with showing you guys that. Now it already came folded up with one end in. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Let's get these pieces out of the way quickly. This is it here for you guys. Now, it's already got one pre-fold in it. I want to put in a few more. So I'm gonna turn my box this way. There's a little crease here. I'm gonna fold it up and what you should see now is that original pre-fold now lines up with this little serration pre-fold. So what I'm gonna do, fold it over itself again. So now I've got pre-folds on a few different lines. I've got a pre-fold in here, one in here, one in here. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Now on this side, there was no pre-fold already put in. So you can see the crease lines where they're supposed to be. So we're gonna start with this one here. Then, as I showed you just a second ago, this little crease line lines up really nicely with this one. Fold it rounds to here. Apologies for hitting the camera. It's right in my way. So we now have pre-folds on these areas here. We're now gonna pre-fold the side edges in. So what I wanna do is hold that flat and then just roll these sides up here. And the same on the other side. Perfect. Now, to get the ends to come in, this is gonna be difficult doing it from this position. Do you know what? I'm just gonna push one in and do it so it'll be easier for me to show you. So, all we need to do, this is where our little corner pieces come in. We've got, these are our locking pieces out on the edge here. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna fold these little corner creases round so they go into there. This comes down and round and loops in and you can see just in here we've got our locks in place just like we do on this side so that would be the bottom of the box on the top is exactly the same so what i'm going to do i'm going to time lapse and blast through this So the final piece of the puzzle is an easy bit. Move those out of the way there. You got these, all you got to do, push them through and then you create your holes. They're already pre-cut, so nice and simple thing to do. Then all you got to do is obviously turn it upside down. So the shiny edge is your top, okay? Underneath is a bit more of a matte finish. Hopefully you guys can see that on the camera. Um, but yeah, so shiny edge there, round into here, fold those up into there, and then what we've got there, and that gives us our lift onto our box, and what we're going to do, place that into the bottom there, top goes on, boom, everyone is a winner, so these are your two box choices they assemble in exactly the same way you've got a pre-print green if you want it or you've got one that's going to allow you to do a full custom box sticker or you can buy them prefabbed before this series finishes i'm going to try and get one for this box as a fine odd so we can show you guys how to put that on as well but that is the box right then let's deal with what else is in our little package now the only difference between my parcel and your parcel now is that i have got two goalkeeper rods these are the two goalkeeper rod choices that you will get we've got a lovely little gold number here and we've got a standard green number here and i'm going to come on to these a little bit more later on but that is basically the goalkeeper comes in two parts this is your rod get out of the way lads next thing you're going to get is a little bag like this now yours may have separate base and discs they might already be put together they might not be i don't know how mark would have sent to you guys so Get these guys out. Now some of them have all popped together. Not a massive issue, but I just want to have mine separated for the start of 
this video. So let's just sort these guys out. Okay, so these are the four main parts of what we're gonna be doing on this episode. Now, apologies if some of you guys are gonna listen to this and go, uh, yeah, obviously, but I'm trying to do this as if someone is coming onto this video and says, oh, do you know what? I'm gonna give that a bash and they've got no idea what any of these parts are, so I'm just gonna cover them real quick. These black bits here, okay, these are bases. I've got a whole video on bases and discs and how I select which colors I do. As you can see, for this team, I've selected the black base with the red discs. Now, there is reasoning behind that. Quite simply, is I just think it looks the best. It's as simple as that. There's no other real main reasons. The shirt is white and red, so the red disc here is going to make that white pop really nicely, especially on that collar. But from eye level, the black is really, really going to look good with them black shorts and black socks. And it's going to make that red and white pop. But there is a whole video about it. And if I remember, it will be in the top of your screen. But don't click off of it yet. You can scroll back to this point in the video and get to it. Or if I remember again, I'll try and remind myself to pop the link for that video in the description. So we've got bases here, the little bowl shape with the washer weight in them. And we've got our discs here. Little note about discs, again, apologies if you guys already know this. Discs have a right and a wrong side, okay? So, here we have some discs, some of the right way up, some of the wrong way up. So, I have a little thing to note then about discs is that they do have a right and a wrong way to be used. Now, the right way up is with no little circles. So, you can see here there's some here, two little indented circles. Okay, these are upside down, so that is the wrong way. They need to be this way up with the large Santiago writing and just a slot hole here. Another awesome thing that I've got here actually that I can show you guys, is you see this here, you will sometimes see this white residue on your disc. Luckily for me, it's on the wrong side anyway, but if it wasn't, it's really easy to get off. It literally just rubs off. So don't panic. If you've got any that have got that white residue on, it comes off really easily. So literally just rub it off with your thumb. Real, real simple. Other thing with discs is, and I'm not sure I've got any here that have it. Um, I mean, this one's got a little bit. Hopefully you guys are gonna see it, but I don't think you will, because it's so, so small. Sometimes where the slot is on the outside of the base, you will have like an extra little bit of plastic. Now this one's so small, that it's not going to make a difference. Sometimes you'll get quite a big bit, and it, what it will mean is that the disc will not slot into the base as nicely as it should. Easiest way to deal with that is to either, what I'm gonna do here is get my knife and just run it around and just get rid of it. Just get rid of that little excess bit of plastic. You can, if you want to, use a file. I've got a craft knife here. This will be very, very useful for you guys later on in the video, so if you haven't got one of these, get hold of one and come back to this video, I would definitely recommend getting yourselves one of these. And obviously be careful, they're really sharp. If you are um, a child and you're watching this video, get adult supervision or get mum and dad to do this for you because the last thing we need to be doing is cutting our fingers up because we don't need our fingers to do our painting. That's that. Cool, so that's this dealt with. Let's get them back out of the way over there. Let's get bases out of the way over here. Other little thing you will have in your box is a diving goalkeeper. Now, diving goalkeepers are the best goalkeepers. They look more realistic, they do a better job, and they're cooler. And basically, this is what you've got. Now, he will slot into this little piece here, just pushes down into your rod, easy as that. Easy peasy. No dramas with this one. We'll come on to how to paint him and stuff later in the series, but there's your goalkeeper, done. Last little piece here, these are your figures. These are classic heavyweight replica figures. Okay, they are all exactly the same. Um, there's no differences in terms of um, appearance. They all look exactly the same, they're generic. We're gonna make them look different with our paint and how we're gonna do them. That's it, that's what you're gonna get in your package. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run a real quick time lapse of me just popping these all together Okay, and then we're gonna just go over how to prepare your figures for what we're gonna do in this series. You'll 
notice in that time lapse I didn't use any glue. My recommendation to you guys is do not even attempt to solid fix these fellas before they are 100% done. Because if you solid fix them and you make a mistake and you need to potentially replace a figure or maybe you damage a base or you get loads of paint on the disc and you've glued it in, you're not getting him out. Trust me, he's not coming out. So do not glue anything. Even if you get a situation like I've got with this guy here where the disc and the figure are really, really loose fit to start with. Now the sack can sometimes happen. Um, it's just the way they come out. Some of them are really nice tight fit, which is kind of what you want. But if you get a loose fit, it's not a massive issue. It's not the end of the world. It's easy to sort out. It's gonna happen. So all we're gonna do with this guy is get yourselves some blue tack, okay? Real simple. All I'm gonna do is I want quite a lot because I wanna hold the base and the disc and the figure in. I'm just gonna plop that in there, push him down into it there, and then just push my figure in. He's not going anywhere now. So now I haven't got to worry about him until we get to the end. The other reason I would definitely not glue these in, okay, at the moment, is because Santiago figures, bases, teams are not as heavy as a classic heavyweight team. So if you want to have this team be heavier than it is right now, then you'll need to add weight your own way. Now again, when I do this, I'll use blue tack and I'll show you all I do. See that little hole in the middle of the washer? Okay, all I wanna do is throw a little bit of blue tack in there and just fill that washer space with some blue tack. That simple, the only other thing I would do after that is throw some super glue over the top of this because if I super glue all this together, the last thing I want is this washer ever coming out. Anyone who's got classic heavyweights knows a Rattler, especially on a late heavyweight, you ain't getting it out. You're gonna have to break it to get it out and then you're gonna, you know, you can up with some issues. So to weight my teams, that's all I do. I know some people will change washers and get heavier washers. I'm not covering that in this video. This video is pretty much mainly about the painting. So that's what I do there. So if you want them to be the same weight, then you can, or close to the weight, that's what I do, just a little bit of blue tack. Fill that round up, make it level on the top. Done and dusted. Now the only other thing that I got extra in my little selection was this, because I'm gonna show you guys what they look like with a finished fine ord figure inside. So if you haven't, ordered yet, if you haven't made your choice on base and disc combination, you're seeing this video and you think, do you know what, I wanna get involved in this, I wanna get myself a discount from Mark Parker at Santiago, I wanna get on this series, I wanna paint Fire Nord, I'm gonna show you now a completed figure in every single base and disc combination. last little bit there you can see a completed figure and all the different base combinations and here he is in the base combination that I have chosen. I personally think it works really well but then again any of the other three options would work really really nicely too. The last bit we're going to go through on this video is figure pre-prep okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to move this guy out of the way because I don't need him anymore. Keeper he's fine I'm gonna move him out of the way too. And all I'm gonna do is bring you guys in a little bit closer. Okay, so due to the nature of the way these things are made, they are injection molded, every now and again, you will get one, potentially two, that are gonna have excess plastic on them, okay? Now, it's gonna be really, really important that we clean that up as best we can, and that is where one of these 
bad boy comes in. So again, if you have not got one of these, I seriously, seriously recommend it. Um, you can get them off of Amazon, you can get them off of Hobbycraft, pretty much any crafty place you can get hold of one. Amazon's probably gonna be quickest maybe, I don't know. But yeah, probably gonna want one of these. So, back to the final point we're making on this video. So sometimes you'll get a figure that's got excess plastic on him. You can see on this guy, just on his wrist here, there's a little bit, and all I'm gonna do is literally just gonna run and just try and get rid of it. Don't wanna push into the plastic too far because I don't wanna be digging out bits of plastic. The other area where they get it quite a lot is just up around his collar line there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, it's sort of excess plastic area there. I'm trying to do this in shot and not mess my figures up. It's really difficult. But yeah, so all I'm looking to do is just clean away any excess plastic area there. So he's cool. Check this guy out. Yeah, so he's got, see so it comes in different areas as well. So this guy, he's got a little bit of extra just up around this top shoulder. So again, I just wanna run my knife across it really. It doesn't have to be a lot because the plastic's not very thick. It's not like it's a, a full mold I'm trying to take out. Down into there. He's got a little bit extra down in his sock line as well. So I'm just gonna try and clear that away. I don't want that to be a problem. And actually, he's got some under his arm as well. This guy's got all sorts going on. You can't really see it. It's really difficult to show. But if I try and just tap the old zoom onto there. So this guy here has got a little bit extra, a little extra seam running in here. Now, my knife's currently running across it. I need to get rid of it. So again, doing this, it's not a lot. It's a, such a small amount, but it will make a big difference when you're coming to painting it. So now he's fine. Next one in here, this guy's got exactly the same issues as the last one, a little bit on the shoulder. And then again, just up there, get rid of that. Got a little bit extra under his arm here as well. So I'm just gonna clear that away if I can. Obviously be super, super careful with these. As I said earlier, get an adult to do this for you if you are a child or in fact you know what even if you don't want to do it get an adult to help you so there's that guy he's cleaned up this guy's got the same issue just here so just want to get rid of that little area there really and they tend to we well, tend to find they tend to have little patterns so if you get it on the inside of the what is his right arm you tend to get an extra thick seam line along this sock area and leg line as well, um, which isn't a massive problem, but because we're doing hooped socks, we do just want to keep an eye on that as well. I'm just going to check these guys over again, just to make sure we are fully, fully pre-prepped on these. Cool, so I'm gonna blast through these very, very quickly in a time lapse. I've only got a few left in here. Um, if I come across anything interesting that you guys haven't seen already, then I will bring you guys back and explain to you how to do it. But yeah, so this is a really, really important step. These little pre-prep stages are really, really super important because you wanna get these done before you start throwing any paint on your figures. Um, so yeah, let me, uh, let me just clean these guys up in a time lapse. Oh, I'll tell you what, there's one here already. So this one's got a lot more excess. You can see it's all the way around his hand in there. These ones are a little bit harder to get rid of. The plastic does tend to be a little bit thicker in this area. And again, trying to do this from this far away as well. The things I do, risking stabbing myself in the hand as well, because I'm trying to show you guys how I do it. It's, you really do not need to apply a lot of pressure. Do not apply a lot of pressure. I've covered a few of these sort of things in other videos before, but he is pretty much cleaned up. He's got a little bit of excess there. And again, as I said, if you get one that's got that left side or the right arm excess, then he's probably gonna have issues on this boot as well, on these, the side of his leg and the boot. It'll be really thick seam line. Um, so again, just go over them just to make sure they're all sorted. So there 
we go then. These guys now are all pre-prepped, ready to go. It's a really, really simple process, but it's one that is really, really important, as I said, to get this done, get it out of the way. I know it's not been any painting in this first video. It's been a real introduction. Um, I say some of you guys would have seen some of that stuff and gone, yeah, okay, I get it. I know what a base and a disc is, but I was just trying to cover it for everyone and show you guys how we pre-prep. These guys now are ready to have their skin tones added on. So if you are like myself and you are going to be having a variety of skin tones i covered this in video one but i will just show you guys in case you haven't got your paints yet the options you have 98 234 and 61. this figure that i have done here is 61. okay i'm going to be doing mine in a variety of different skin tones these are skin tones i'm going to be using in here so we've got 61 We've got 234 and matte 98. If you want to do the same as me, or you can do whatever choice or any options you guys want to do. But in the next video, we are going to be covering how to add our skin tones, creating long and short sleeves, and also creating to start creating that V neck that you guys can see here. Of course, just to go over again, a couple of extra little bits and pieces that you may need. You are going to need to get yourselves a craft knife if you haven't already. As I said, be very, very careful with these. In future, you're going to need some form of paper towel or the classic tea towel that you see us use here. And of course, as mentioned in the video, white spirit for cleaning off your brushes and your discs. Today, guys, we have prepped our figures. Probably the most important stage we are going to undertake because if you do not prep those figures and you start painting them, those little extra bits of plastic are going to cause so many issues with painting and it makes their arms look massive on some of them. So we need to need to clean that up. Really, really important. We've also covered how to build your box, okay? Getting it ready, getting their new home all ready and how to get those figures into those discs and into those bases, okay? And again, really, really important. Do not glue anything until these are 100% done, 100% dry. If you have enjoyed the video, guys, please click the subscribe button. If you are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Like it, comment on it. If you've got any questions about anything that I have covered today, please put them in the comments. I will try and get to them before the next episode comes around so I can not only answer them in the comments, but I will cover them in the video. So subscribe. Couple of videos kicking around here until the next one. 2021 is here. Stay safe.